Good morning, my name is Katherine Pike. We're at Douglas Freeman High School. This is Honors Algebra 2, and today we are doing dividing radicals. So starting with our number sense routine, if you guys can take a moment just to think to yourself, what are some things that are alike or different about those two items? You can write on your whiteboard or just think. Take a moment just to whisper to your elbow partner some of the things you might have written down or what you're currently thinking if you didn't write anything down. And then today, for the purposes of time, since we are going to dive into some direct instruction, we're just going to do two contributions. Would anyone like to contribute something they thought of or something their partner shared with them? One thing alike or different? Thank you, Rachel. Um, the, the, the second problem, x, is the square root of 11. Thank you. One other thing you see alike or different? Christine. So with a warm-up like this, we are not looking for anything right or wrong, but we do want to add on to anything Christine or Rachel might have contributed today. Take a second and think, is there anything you would add onto their point? Would anyone like to share out? Or do we have any questions about one of their points? Yeah, they're good, okay. So just warming up our math brains for today. You already have your notes out. We stopped in the middle of dividing radicals yesterday. We had talked about the idea of simplifying and when we might look for that. And today, we're going to talk about this new word, rationalizing. And before we dive into that, I want to give you some context for what you already know. So let's say you're rolling through a math problem and you end up with the answer 14 over 21. Would you leave it that way? All right, turn to your partner and tell them why not and what you would do to that. All right, I was eavesdropping on my yellow tables. Can someone from a yellow table tell me what their reasoning was? We don't leave it like this. What do we change it to and why, PJ? Don't leave it like that because it's not simplified. What's the step that we're now doing all in our heads when we simplify it to two-thirds? What were we actually doing to get down to two-thirds? Tasha. All right. So this 7 over 7, we call a form of 1. I call it a FOOF, just the acronym form of 1. And we're going to use that today because when we're dealing with radicals, this is unsimplified. We don't leave a radical in the denominator 
because that causes issues later on when we're graphing because radicals have a restricted domain. So the word in Algebra 2 for what you already know how to do with fractions is rationalizing. So everyone's putting in their notes this idea that rationalizing is removing radicals from the denominator using a form of one fraction. And you may decide that it's helpful to have the fraction version next to that as a reminder of what you already know, but you don't have to write that part down. So if we're looking at that first example, we're going to set up our form of 1. And just for this one, we're going to encase it in a giant 1. Just to emphasize the point that it is worth 1, and that's why we can do this. We're changing its form. We're not changing its value. What could I possibly multiply? So that in the end, my radical has disappeared. Just take a second to think. Does anyone have an idea of what they might do? Five squared. Five squared. Like this? Yes. Okay. So if we work through Jacob's contribution, let's see how it would play out. 5 squared times the square root of 5. What is 5 squared? 25. Have we removed our radical? But you're on to something. We want a 5 squared underneath our radical. So if I already have 1, take a second. Jacob has gotten us on the right path. Turn and talk with your partner. How could we adjust his contribution? How would you adjust that? We'll take him off the hot seat, but he has been able to adjust his own contribution. Who would like to verbalize for him? What is he going to do? Abby? Radical 5. Because then, when we multiply, we get what he wanted underneath, which was the 5 squared. That will lift. To make it a form of 1, your numerator just has to match your denominator. That's what a form of 1 is. So in the numerator, we get 1 times the square root of 5 over 5. And this is our final answer. Back to fractions, these have the same decimal value. They're the same number, different forms. Same thing here. Our beginning problem, our answer have the same equivalent value, just different forms. You're going to try this one on your own. I'm going to give you a minute. You can do it on your whiteboard. You can do it in your notebook. I'm going to give you a chance to talk with your partner after you've thought about it for a minute. How would you start?
All right, if you haven't yet chatted with someone next to you, take a moment to share with them what you started with. There are a couple different paths you could do. Is the 12 inside a radical? So we can't multiply, it would be 12 and then just radical 4x. They're not going to merge under that radical. So this is great. I was listening to your explanation. Just think, can you reduce the 24 to 4? All right. I'm going to put two people on the spot, and you can chime in for them. Both of these students got to the right fully simplified answer, and they did two different ways. And so I want to encourage you when we're doing these types of problems, there are lots of ways to solve them. So you're always looking for what makes sense to you. Ashton, can you start off with what you did first? <clears throat> okay, so I started out by getting the four out of the radical, and having it on the bottom two radical x. And then because there's only an x in the radical, multiplies the top and the bottom by root x. Um, and then I have 12 root x on the top and 2x on the bottom. And that just simplifies to 6 root x over x. All right, give him a round of snaps. I did not prep him that we were going to make him share. All right, did anyone else notice that you could take the square root of 4 first? There were a few, but only a handful. Most of you went through it the way Miriam did, which will always work. Can you walk us through what you did? Um, so I multiplied 12 over 2 over x by square root of 4x. And then so on the bottom, we would have gotten the square root of 16x squared, which just implies 4x. And then on the top, um, I simplified the square root of 4x, so it was 2 square root of x. So you multiply 2 times 12, so you get 24 square root of x and 4x. Beautiful. Same answer, different path. Anyone who did it Miriam's way, give her a round of snaps. All right, Rachel. I have a question. Yeah. So you can still, like that um, coefficient is not attached to the x. This 24? Or the, like the 4 is not attached to the, like it doesn't have to be. It is multiplication. So if we remember, we can split a radical over multiplication. So you could split it into two separate problems. Good. Other questions? All right, so we are stopping with just two examples because with these types of problems, I really want you to think through how you would approach it. You and your partner are going to do a sort and solve. So take a second and make sure your partner has the notes of simplifying from yesterday. And then, when presented with a whole mess of problems, how do you know when to start and what to do first? You and your partner are gonna talk through these eight problems. The first thing I want you to do is on a whiteboard, draw a T-chart. And you're deciding would your first step be simplifying or rationalizing? Then solve four of the ones, any four that you want from those eight. If you and your partner can go ahead and pull out a red, yellow, green card, Put it between you, your current feeling. Red, 
completely lost with those two examples. Yellow, a few questions. Green, we're golden. We're good to go. So yellow is a good compromise. Yep. Hmm? Yep, those are the same things on the board. Yeah. And you can just physically sort these. So you can just like move them around. Yeah. yeah, so like would you start by simplifying or would you start by rationalizing? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to get at, actually. So if I looked at these two problems, and if we look at the two types that we've done so far, would you start by rationalizing this one? So what about looking at that makes you think, oh, well, I would simplify it first. Perfect. Yeah. Or the fact that there's two radical signs. So I want you to start noticing these patterns, okay? So I would just sort that into the simplifying pile. Go ahead and sort everything first, and then you guys can solve. Okay. All right, Matthew and Kayla, let's check in. Have we sorted yet? Okay, so let's do that first. Let's walk through this one together. All right, when you look at these two problems, which one looks more like one we've done today? Okay, so we'd probably start by rationalizing because that's the example of what we look like. Why might you not start by rationalizing with this one? What well, can't be? All right. So that's the patterns we're starting to look for. Okay? So go ahead, you and Kayla talk through. This one is more simplification, this one is more rationalizing. There may be some where you actually do both, but I just want you to do an initial sort and then start practicing and solving. Okay? Alright, how are we doing so far? Okay. So have we started sorting yet? So the first thing I want you guys to do is look at all of these problems as a whole and sort them. Which ones would you start by rationalizing? Which ones would you start by or simplifying? Okay. And same thing for you guys. And then you can dive into solving. And there may be some that you can't decide on until you start to solve. But start thinking about those patterns of what would help you decide what to do first. Yep. All right. I'm going to have to make my way around. Can we create a small path for Mrs. Pike in the desert? Which one are we looking at? Okay. So you started just by using the exact denominator, which is fine. Then we look at the coefficients on the outside and treat it like actually that blue fraction. Is there any way we can reduce it? We're going to keep working, but thank you for stopping by our classroom today. Girls.